have developed an online makerspace uh, in our school. And basically what it is, is opportunity for students to go in and use different apps through uh, Google Play or through their Google accounts. And um, create presentations, create assignments uh, using these apps to just kind of showcase what they've learned and display their knowledge. Um, the students can use like a single app for single presentations. They can actually app smash and use a lot of creative thinking um, and critical thinking as well to get these apps to manipulate and work together. Um, and basically they have a lot of freedom and a lot of opportunity to use tools that they otherwise wouldn't have access to or maybe, um, you know, without the use of having additional technology or cameras and things like that. Basically, since all of our students do have a Google account, um, they'll log into their accounts and from there they'll go to their Google Drive and from there they can connect to any of the Google apps. Um, they can connect those apps to their drive and basically dig in and work around in it and, and you know, create presentations and things like that using these apps. Um, the great thing about it is, is that because they're going through their Google Drive, you know, as teachers we have the opportunity grade them, we have the opportunity to really log in and they can share it with us, um, and we don't have to worry about having a place for them to turn it in or a place, um, you know, where we struggle to be able to see what they do if they've used some obscure app or something like that. Um, so basically, just having access to that, you know, the internet and having access to the Google Drive um, will get you into those apps where students can play around, um, connect them to their drive, and, you know, figure out how they're going to create their presentation. Since we are a school that uses Google Apps for Education, the easiest way to integrate um, app smashing and makerspace at TOPS is to go through our Google Drive. So I'm going to walk you through what that looks like. So when we go to our Google Drive that's um, connected to any of our Google accounts, but I'm using my top account right now, um, we have the opportunity to see what apps are compatible with our Google Drive. And so in order to do that, we're going to click on New and then click on More. And when we click on More, all of the Google apps that we've recently used will pop up. And if we want to preview all the apps that are there to offer, just go down and click on Connect More Apps. So when we click on this, all of these different apps come up. And if you scroll down through them, you can see there are hundreds. And then even once you get to the bottom, of this particular page, there's another button that you can click on just to see more apps. So there are a ton of apps that are available that can connect to Google Drive. Now, if you want to, to select um, a few just by like education or games or entertainment or social or whatever, you have filters up here at the top that you can do that. But um, our students have the opportunity to access all of these different apps and connect them to the drive. In assignments that I've given before, um, I've had students use things like We Video here, um, Lucid Chart, uh, Coggle, the Mind Meister, Mind Mapping, uh, Powtoon Presentations, let's see, Cuckoo, Diagramming, Lupe Collage. Um, all kinds of different apps, mind map, and presentation tools that they can use in order to express what they're thinking and show us what they've learned. So when we ask a student to create a makerspace project, we're actually asking them not only to follow the standards that we're using in our classes and show us what they're learning based on our classes, we're asking them to evaluate technology to plan a project, we're asking them to think creatively and to think critically, and then we're asking them to take all of this information and put it into a new format that can be used and shared with us digitally. So it's really exciting um, platform for the students to use as they are learning online. What's even more exciting is when the students start to use multiple apps to combine them together and to look at the different pathways and the connections that can be made among these apps and start presenting the information in lots of new formats for them as well. In my English 1 class, my students use um, an apps project of using a single app to um, explain how o Odysseus in the Odyssey um, embodies the epic traits, or excuse me, the traits of an epic hero. And so this assignment is one of the assignments where a student use an app called Real Time Board 
and it's an interactive whiteboard where they can create maps, embed videos, different things like that. And this was one of the presentations that they came up with. So this is that exact same project, and this is a, another um, app called MindMup in which the student did the same thing but organized it a bit differently. And as you can see, <laughs> it won't let me save the changes, but um, as I'm scrolling around and looking, it's um, movable and you have the opportunity to zoom in and out and view the whole thing or view just pieces and parts as you zoom in. Another project that I have students do using Makerspace is to actually what's called App Smash and put a bunch of different apps together into one presentation. This one is also um, a mind map that a student used, and if you can't tell, this is for Romeo and Juliet, um, where they're given basically an essay prompt and then asked to go crazy with apps to answer the question. But this particular project used MindMup as a platform, but then another app called Pixlr, which allows you to edit and um, put words and quotes and things on different pictures as you're going through and then embed those pictures into this mind map presentation and the student did a few different ones and, and chose graphics but then you can also see the organization that um, he chose to do using mind map. And finally we have a, another um, project which mind or excuse me which um, real time board was used as the platform to embed everything. But the student actually chose to do her own artwork and her own sheets. She used an app to upload these and stitch them all together. Used Wii Video to create a voice narration about it and um, a video with the, um, the slides that she had stitched. And then she's embedded it again into Real Time Board. You know, our students are living in an era where they are going to be required to know technology and things that haven't even been invented yet. And what that's going to require of them is just the ability to go and learn and explore and, and be willing to adapt to new circumstances. And so having them use these apps asks them to evaluate and think critically and, and explore new technologies that they've never used before, which is a skill that they're going to need in the future. Um, additionally, there's a lot of creative problem solving that goes along with it because they have to figure out how to present the information that they know in new ways and to a broad variety of audiences. And so it asks them to really just um, think about their audience and think about how um, their presentations are going to look like and how they want to present them. great things about doing the, the makerspace is that students have the opportunity to choose their personal vehicle for presentation and so the students are going to be more engaged and more interested in what they're doing rather than just like taking a multiple choice test or something like that. Um, they get to show you their thought processes, they get to show you how they learn, not just that they can you know choose the correct answers. So um, you get to see how they have conceived a project and you get to see every step of the way as they're um, giving the information about whatever topic they're discussing. In English language arts, we use it a lot for the students to show a lot of linear learning. Um, they can show how they get from point A to point B, but also they can think very abstractly and create something that is a little bit more artistic or a little bit more creative, depending on how that student learns. Um, as a teacher, I love grading these because it's a little bit better than um, you know, always looking for proper sentence structure and, and all those grammatical errors. Um, you know, you have this content area that you love and when the students really like tap into their creativity and are showing you what they know within that content area, it really helps um, bring the learning full circle and you um, actually as a teacher enjoy grading and giving feedback. Uh, my email um, at BTCS is eubanks, E-U-B-A-N-K-S-K, and of course at btcs.org. Um, but I also have an office phone, 423-579-4595.